with all the big calls on all the big races. It's a very Merry Christmas to you and a festive edition here of What A Shout, the Racing Post flagship feature weekend show. Myself, Dave Orton, thrilled, a Christmas thrilled to be with you this morning. Filmed somewhere in the capital on the 23rd of December. Now, these are the two blank days that racing aficionados dread. You can go to Shanti, you can go to America or Australia for a bit. But my lord, you're sitting on your hands. So time to study up the Boxing Day cards. I mean, honestly, we've lost these two Saturdays to the freezing weather. But my lord, the bottleneck of entries, we've seen them all. Have you? Wow, it really is Christmas time for racing fans out there. It's going to be outstanding. We'll be giving you all the big tips on all the big races, of course. We've got a stellar guest for you, as usual. Let's have a look at exactly what we've got coming up on the cars, then. Uh, there you go. Five big race previews for you, as promised. Uh, Alan King is the guest. We go down to Barbary Castle, get the word, not just on Edward Stone, but all the stable stars down there. Alan in great form, unmissable stuff, and those all-important weekend winners. I've sort of reversed it up there because it's time look we've even got a christmas tree in here no expense spared and we brought the great man down from stoke (laughs) yes so looking forward to it and it's so exciting isn't it it's tremendous card there's no inspections planned tremendous line you had to go there didn't you i mean look come on they never get it right do they that's it but so with the final decks are in head down study away plenty of racing on from us as odds compilers at bet 365 there's so many horses running so many races We're not going to get every horse right, are we? Oh, and they've been trigger happy people out there. They've been getting them up straight away. Grave on action all over the place. And you know it's Christmas because we managed to get Wilders on Skype. I don't even have to deal with him this morning. (laughs) Happy days, Robbie Wilders. Yeah, it's uh, it's weird. I'm so used to sitting in there with you, but uh, I had to get away early for uh, Christmas. I had the last week off. So uh, I'm here in uh, my Maidstone residence. Are you feeling refreshed? uh, I mean, you don't look very festive. I mean, you look more like it's Halloween coming up. Yeah, I don't actually own a Christmas jumper, mate. Uh, that's one thing missing in my wardrobe. But uh, now I'm feeling good. There is actually a lot of decorations around here. I know you can't really see it in the background, but uh, yeah, can assure you I'm in the mood. Oh, there we are. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Aren't we in the mood as well? Get your comments below. Let's hear all your tips and let's get on with the show. Right, well, let's go and get a festive greeting, shall we, from the Barbary Castle and uh, the trainer who's done it all in the jumps game and on the flat as well is Alan King joins us. Alan, thank you for joining us. Merry Christmas to you. Yeah, Merry Christmas to everyone and good morning. How is everything? Now, we've had a couple of blank Saturdays, Alan, haven't we? How difficult has that been with the snow and everything up at Barbary? Has it been causing havoc? Um... Well, I must admit, I've been in Dubai for five days, so I, I missed the worst of it. But the, the team worked very hard, and we, we never missed a day. You know, the, the, the staff here kept the, the gallops open, and uh, we were able to get back on grass um, yesterday and again this morning. So they're, they're right up together. This is what happens on Water Shout Views. You see, we lift the lid on these training operations. Everyone thinks that King has been grafting away, but no, he's been sunning it up. This is what happens when you train 15 Shelton Fessel winners, I suppose, Alan. Alan, we should talk about the year as a whole, if you don't mind. You're nearing in on a very poignant milestone, aren't you? Is it 2,000 winners are on the horizon this season? Um, yeah, if I sort of get on with it a bit, yes, we're, we're, we're pretty close to it. Yeah, I think I need another 20 or so to get to the 2,000. Wow, there you are. So, listen, this is a big hit. So Adam's got runners everywhere this Christmas. But, of course, 2022 is not just about the jumps game, Alan. It was, a, it was an interesting flat season as well. And Trushan became the first horse to win, of course, three days on uh, uh, three winners sorry, on the Ascot card, Champions Day. How is Trushan first and foremost? It seems a bit weird to be talking about the flat at this time of year. Well, he's very well, I think. I'm going to see him later on this morning. Um, he's had a good break at Jamie McGee's. He's had two months out on the paddocks, and he's now back on the water treadmill. Um, he'll do that for another few weeks, and the plan is to have him back into training by sort of middle of January. But um, I'm looking forward to seeing him, but I think Jamie's very happy with him. That's excellent, isn't it? And our viewers will stop throwing mince pies at the TV now because we've asked about uh, what we th- I think we can call your stable star. Hot on his heels, of course, and is Edward Stone. You must have been absolutely thrilled, of course, in the Tingle Creek when he came back. It was a case of trying to get a prep run into him, wasn't it? And then he turned up and it turns out he didn't need one at all. No, I mean, he had done plenty of work. And as, as you know, he, we took him to seven barrows and he, he did a proper bit of work sort of 10 days before Sandland. And I think that just put the edge on him. Um, and the plan uh, is to head to Kempton on Tuesday for the Desert Orchid. 
Yes. How difficult was that, Alan, just while we've got you? I mean, you, of, of course, As it, it was going to be the Schlur chase, wasn't it? Then it was Ascot. We were excited about seeing him in a handicap, of course. And then it was a case of, well, we can't get him out. We're going to have to go straight there. How did that mess with his routine? Obviously, it, whatever happened, it weren't the Oracle. Yeah, no, not really. I mean, he's a fairly, fairly straightforward horse to train. I mean, what was worrying me more about going into the Tingle Creek was, is, is a grade one first time out, you know? I mean... I think we're operating about a 20% first time out strike rate this year, but that's all very well in novice hurdles and things. When you, when it's grade one, you're thinking, you know, and Paul's horse had had a run and um, I just I thought it was very important. We did take him to Cheltenham as well, and he just had a, an away day the, when he was due to run the Schlur and sort of wandered around the pre prade ring. And I, I did it to try and get the adrenaline up in him a little bit, but I'd forgotten how laid back he is at the races, so I don't think he really got very excited at all about it. But um, at least it was a journey in the lorry and... Um, he saw the crowds and then he did a proper bit of work um, at Nicky's and, you know, he, um, it really tightened them up that, that, that away day in Lambourne. We associate you, of course, with champion chases. There was talk about moving him up a draft. I mean, he's a fascinating horse, isn't he? Because, you know, you started him off as like a supreme horse, of course, and then he sort of was a little bit keen over hurdles, wasn't he, running Great Woods and stuff. And then, of course, he was a second season novice when he won uh, the Arkle. You know, slightly older than your average type, if you like. It does seem here in Britain that we have slightly older novices these days. This will be a bit of a modern train. We'll see that at Kempton as well with Time and McFabulous and the likes. He, he, obviously, you've made a man of him, you know, going over fences, Alan. Um, how much is there more to come, I suppose? And you must have been thrilled to see his novice season, you know, form working out a little bit as well now. Exactly. I mean, uh, you know, the, the, the view was that it was one or two people that said it wasn't a terribly strong article last year. But look, I sort of left it that we would try him over two miles um, at the beginning of this season and if he you know if he was getting beat there then we had the option of maybe stepping him up to to two and a half but you know the way he won at um sand there's no uh, there's no, no no thoughts of going any farther now no, quite right absolutely not and uh they say there's one to beat in that don't they by looks of it now but i wonder whether there might be some holes to pick in that form we've got pat cooney with us along the way what price said stone at the moment for the article well he's second favorite behind it in ergamine but um you do look at him alan just said that the, the, the theory was it wasn't a strong article it wasn't a strong champion chase that in ergamine won last year and mm. It was visually very impressive at Sandown, wasn't it? Whether I was, I was curious if Alan thought Kempton would be playing to Edward Stone's strengths though on uh, Tuesday. Would that be his his ideal track, or would that we'd be better at the likes of Cheltenham? I don't think it really matters. I mean, he won very well around um, Kempton last year in the novice. So, um, and, and the way we've got it planned, it's it's bar um, not getting him started as early this year. You know, we run at Sandown and the Henry VIII last year. Then we went to Kempton. He had a break, ran in Warwick. Um, and the plan is to run him, obviously, Kempton next week and then go to Newbury, which is the same Saturday as the Warwick. So it, it, time-wise, it's very similar programme and timings to last season, you know. So I would hope he'd have two more runs before heading to Cheltenham. And no matter what's said in certain quarters, Alan, let me tell you, at the Racing Post, and we can tell you our viewers, he's got a humongous following this all. So uh, we wish you all the I, best I think, with him. I think Matt's only paying sort of silly but devil, you know, I don't <laughs> Well, he used to work here. We got rid of him early, don't worry, Alan. He's, 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 not, he, no, no. he's not our class anymore. Uh, talking about stable stars, and let's hone in on Boxing Day, if you don't mind, you've got So Royale. I, I, I make this his first run in the Christmas hurdle. And again, we always cover him on Saturdays here live in the studio and we always say if you had to own one horse in training not to blow too much smoke up connections bums but he is the one he does everything doesn't he yeah he's been an absolute superstar and his homework's as good as ever I mean is he nine turning ten I think um originally we were going to miss um originally we were going to miss the Christmas hurdle and head to the rail kill but the rail queue is looking pretty strong because Nigel's now taking his horse there and, and Napa's hill heads there so Look, um, we're probably going to tr try and ride him to probably finish third on, on, on Tuesday. I think on Monday, that's about as good as we can hope for with, with Nicky's pair in. But look, there's a lot of prize money up for grabs. And he's a sort of horse that we just duck and dive with a little bit towards the middle end of the season and just see what we can pick up. What have you wouldn't, made of Wouldn't want a lot more rain around. for him either. Oh, OK. You know, no, of course, because uh, uh, we're about 20 minutes as the, as the crow flies here in the studio. Uh, on the 23rd, Alan, so it's, it, it is absolutely bucketing it down. Mm. But a couple of soft ground horses haven't been entered on the card, and, and we know what it's been like 
with this dry summer. So I don't know, maybe maybe he'll be all right. What have you made of Constitution Hill then, Alan? I mean, everyone's having their word on him at the moment. Lots of people saying he will end up uh, being the best hurdler we've ever seen. I mean, he's only won a handful of times. Yeah, I mean, uh, every time I've seen him, I've been sort of blown away. I mean, first time was um, sand down last, was it January? or um, And bottomless ground. And he absolutely just sailed through, you know. And um, obviously the Supreme... Um, when, he, when he took John Bourne and everything apart, he, he looks—he looks very special. And um, the way he quickened—I mean, he seemed to quicken in half a dozen strides at Newcastle and put it to bed. I mean, the only thing with him is he is such a good jumper; it actually half scares me watching him. Um, he, he leaves no room for error. He is so quick. And, um, you know, just—it's it's quite it's, it's brilliant, but it's also quite scary to watch him. We're having to invent new superlatives from here at the Racing Post. I can tell you that much. Right, this is where, look, look we don't leave, you know, you've cold here, viewers. We're going to go Paxman next now. Should we ask Alan about some horses? We sort yep. of have prepped Alan a little bit for this, but Pat Cooney, you've got a list. Go for it, go on. Um, yes, uh, a horse that has maybe triumph hurdle aspirations, a Spartan Army. What are your thoughts on him? He made a, a, an impressive uh, debut for you, I thought. Yeah, he won very well at, at, um, at Weatherby and... Um... Originally, the plan was to go to Kempton 27th for the introductory, and he does have an entry in that, but we've also put him in the finale. Um, surprisingly, Chepster doesn't... Looks as if the ground's going to be much better than you'd normally expect at this time of the year. So, look, he'll, he'll run Tuesday. I'm just not sure where, he, where he'll go yet. But he's a horse we like, and he seems to, his work's been very, very good. Um, yeah, let's see how he builds on his debut. Yeah, he looks pretty fast, doesn't he, in between his hurdles, that's for sure. And um, money well spent hopefully for you. Um, memories of Tritonic. We'll get to him a little bit later on. What's next? Come on. Uh, two bumpers, really, Alan. Dancing in Brazil and Favour and Fortune. Both lightly race these two. Yeah, both uh, unbe uh, both one on the debuts. Um, Favour and Fortune. He's just taking a little bit of a break over Christmas. Just ran up a little bit light with me. I, tra I was training him for Ascot last week and uh, the listed bumper there. But we're, we're just giving a wee bit of time. I would think you'll see him probably end of January, February. And, you know, if he's as good as we hope, he, he's one that could perhaps go to Aintree um, at, the, at the national meeting for the bumper. He, he'll stay bumpering this year, but um, he looks he looks an exciting horse. And then uh, dancing in Brazil, I mean, he's a he's very well-connected horse. Um, he's a half-brother to Cor de Leon and a good horse I had a few years ago called Lisp. Uh, he won on his debut at Huntingdon, and the plan is to run him at Cheltenham New Year's Day in the listy junior bumper. And the interesting thing about him is he's still a coat. Um, it's just a, the back mind that if, if he turned out to be very good, he's, he's got a pedigree that he could make a stallion. He's by Blue Brazil, who's one of the most exciting mm. stallions around at the moment. So um, we we'll just have to see how he develops. OK. So. And I've, I've won more for you. A horse that won at Weatherby on our uh, Charlie Hall uh, meeting. Back in October, Hall Lane. He seemed to win at a big price that day, um, but it was a, a. I thought it was a decent performance, really. Yeah, and I think the forms worked out very well. Yeah. I think second, third, and possibly fourth have all come out and won since. Um, we didn't not rushed him back. He's a very tall, sort of immature horse that is going to improve with time. But um, been very happy with his work, and he's um, he's declared to run at Huntingdon on on Boxing Day. I haven't actually seen the final declarations yet, but. Um, you know, whatever he does, he's going to be an even better horse with another summer on his back um, when he's when he starts to really fill out. So, always been the plan that we would never over race him this year. We're after Christmas presents from Alan. He's not going to be twenty-two to one. I can tell you that much. Come on, you've got loads left on this list. Are you, are you trying to <laughs> sort of coyly get out of this? Um, another horse I, I, I like, Alan Harbour Lake in the Hemmings colours. I think uh, I was there when he made a winning debut, and I've followed him since. Um, on the face of it, I was a bit disappointed with him last time, but his previous form looks pretty solid. Yeah, I, don't, I just think he was a little bit too free the other day. Um, um, but um, again, he's more a horse for another year. He's quite delicate. He doesn't stand a lot of work racing. Um, he's had a bit of time. We put him on Gastrogard as well, which just helps with um, ulcers. He's, he's the sort of type of horse, a little bit stressy. So we're working back. I mean, I would imagine we could possibly run him in the Lanzarote. Um, he would need to go up a few pounds for the Coral Cup, but if he didn't get in that, he'd get in the Martin Pine. So he's probably a horse we're only going to run maybe two or three more times this season, um, and then uh, he'll chase next autumn. But, um, 
A lot of ability, but not quite the finished article yet. That's interesting, isn't it? Because you got the feeling when you put him in the great wood, you sense that there was a big E in him. He's very, very interesting. And come on, then your favourite? Uh, yeah, I have two favourites, but they're, they're, they're both sort of uh, heartbreak horses for me. Dayran de Karjak, the horse who I always have as an eye catch, has been in my tracker for about three years now. Um, he always looks as though he can win one of these big handicaps one day. Yeah, I mean, we were really quite fancying him for Cheltenham the other day on good ground. I mean, last year he was running well on those on, on ground he was hating, but um, uh, he wasn't beaten far in the in the November um, handicap, and we schooled him in cheap pieces. He was very sharp. So he will, he's got an entry at Kempton Tuesday, but I think we'll skip that, and he will probably go to Cheltenham New Year's Day, provided they don't get too much rain. He's a very much a good ground horse okay. and cheap pieces. Um, okay, I'm and, I'm and then... And my final Going one, on, he's one that at some stage will probably just step him up and trip a wee bit as well. Okay. Um, he's maybe crying out for three miles. And, and my, my final one for you, another notebook horse, as she has been most of her <clears> career, <throat> Nina the Terrier. Uh, I have to say, Alan, every time I go to the races and you say to people, what do you fancy? Whatever race she's running in, they always turn around and say, I give Nina the Terrier a chance. She was unlucky at Weatherby on our Charlie Hall meeting. And I thought she ran OK last time out as well. Surely she's going to uh, come good at some stage. Well, we hope so. I mean, she's a, she's, we're all very fond of her. Um, she's a real tough lady and um, she's in very good form. She worked this morning. Um, she's got a few entries next week. I haven't spoken to Charles yet, but um, I think she's in at Weatherby and Newby next weekend. She'll have another entry. The interesting thing is because she'd fallen um, at... at um, Weatherby, and I agree with you. I mean, I thought she was travelling extremely well that day, and the other two up front had gone very hard, you know. Uh, we scored her over fences, and she was brilliant. No, she's not very big. Um, she'll be jumping a fence sooner rather than later. So she's destined to be in the notebook for a few more seasons, yeah. Well, be well, I thought she was well-named, because she looks like a terrier, doesn't she? Absolutely. So, so she'll be going fences. Uh, let's squeeze in two more. Come on, this is the festive edition. The Glancing Queen, Alan. Everyone loves her. No entries. No, um, unfortunately, and this is one of the reasons that I've been so cautious early part of the season. We did run her at Cheltenham uh, November meeting and unfortunately she damaged a tendon. So uh, the Glancing Queen has been retired oh. um, and I think she's due to go to the uh, the mayor's sale in January. She'd be a lovely broodmare, you know, black type, um, bumper hurdle, and by an outstanding sire in Jeremy. But no, I'm afraid we haven't, we won't see um, the glancing queen again on the race course. I remember she was dedicating her bumper season, of course. She had the, those two seasoning bumps as well. Uh, she gave us a lot of fun, Alan. And North Lodge is a horse that's on a lot of people's lips. All got a little bit quiet for us about him. Yeah, you won't see him till next season. Um, um, again, I'm going to go and see him in a little while. He's at Jamie's, and it's it very sly, but he hit the outside of a tendon, and um, there was no core lesion or anything in it, but there was bruising and a bit of damage on the outside. But it's it's it was marginal, but enough to stop me. Um, great pity, because he was um, he's a very exciting horse, and he'll still come back. So. Yeah, OK, patience, the key with him. Well, Alan, you'll be thrilled to know that we're now nearing the end of this interview. It's been great to have you back on What A Shout. If, if our viewers, just very quietly away from Pat's ears, had to have a five on one running over the Christmas period? Well, I'm the worst tips to go, Pat. So if I tip one, you're guaranteed it won't win. So well, let, I'm sure they're better judges than I am. <laughs> all right, OK. <laughs> Let's get on that Brazil horse then, shall we? Who you likened to Alderbrook without meaning to be. Uh, Alan... From us all here at What A Shout and the Racing Post, you and the family and the team, thanks for, you know, your columns in the weekend have been a great fun. We look forward to them for the rest of the season. All the best for 2023 and have a great Christmas. Thank you and the same to all the team there. There you go then, Alan King. Wasn't that an absolute pleasure? Kingy, and again, you need to, look, I need to give you some more tips, I can tell you on interviewing, because you've got to just let him talk. People yeah. think that I interrupt all the time, but trust me, on Skype it's really difficult. And, you know, sometimes I need to give you the hurry up. But, he just goes on and on, doesn't he? That's it. He's, a, he's just a joy to talk to, isn't he? And he, I, we asked him, what, half a dozen and more horses? And he was telling us what he thought of them, where they were going to run, what yeah. they want going forward. Sad about the galloping. Yeah, the galloping course. queen. But uh, he gave us some horses that are probably not on a lot of people's radars. A couple of one that won at a bumper at Southwell. The next Alderbrook. Yeah, and um, <laughs> you think, oh, OK, notebooks at the ready. So uh, well worth watching his interview. Yeah, and R Robbie, you didn't join us that interview, but my lord, he gave us the word on Edward Stone. Is he on your radar for the champion chase or...? Yeah, he's got to be. Um, I think it's going to be hard to knock 
a Nergamin off his perch. Uh, really like what he's been doing uh, the last couple of years. But uh, yeah, he's definitely the biggest British hope. But I mean, the market tells us that, doesn't it? It looks like a bit of a two-horse race at the moment. Well, it does. And I, I listen, I'm not going to be mischievous. There's no Rob Way in sight here, you'll be thrilled to know. Not until Boxing Day anyway. But uh, I'm wondering about an Nergamin. I'm starting to sense... I don't know. I might be starting to find some opposition against him, I think. There you go. All right, great stuff. Right, shall we have a look for you, as promised, then, at the races on Boxing Day? The cards are coming up. Listen, get all your Christmas tips in. I want to hear from you. I want to read these comments below. What's the darkest horse running? There's like 20 runners in Maiden Herders at Leopard Town. You've got Limerick, you've got Downwall, Huntington, as we've heard about. We've got the Lincolnshire National, which is a race I know you're keen on. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And, and uh, there's just... Good quality racing wherever in the yeah. country you're looking at. Shall we start with the Novice Chase then at Kempton? Is the Corto style the grade one Novice Chase? Small field, Pat. Small field, uh, but a quality field. And normally with Novice Chases, you tend to think, oh, well, it must be a five-year-old and a six-year-old that's going to make the breakthrough. But you've got two eight-year-olds in this race, Mac Fabulous mm. and Time Hill, who are uh, you know pretty high-class hurdlers in their time. They're now both taken to fencing. And an interesting runner, really, I think, is a Gelino Bello of Paul Nichols with Bryony Frostbook. Now, this is only a six-year-old. He's only won two small field races. I was there the day he won at Weatherby, and that was that three-runner race where something whipped round at the start, and he ended up making all. And in fairness, I didn't think he was overly impressive, but I think Connections felt he wasn't doing a thing in front. Mm. So he's going to be better judged so in, in a bigger field. Um, but I did just keep coming back to Mac Fabian. So I thought, I thought he was quite impressive last time out, and I think... You look at him, Kempton, yeah, that looks ideal for him. The trip round there, ideal. Uh, and I just think he's he's made for this race, so mm. he'd be my selection. All right, this has been won by some greats, of course. Uh, no Baddy Griffin Cottage, which a lot of you are hoping out there for. Uh, Rob, it's hard to find an eight-year-old that's won this in recent memory. We've got two here. Yeah, strange. Uh, I mean, McFabulous got quite a strange sort of profile for this kind of race. Um, it'd be interesting if the rain arrives, because he doesn't like soft ground. There is quite a lot of rain forecast. So that would put me off. But, I mean, on the form of that time hill defeat at Newbury, he probably is the one to beat. Uh, I was interested in Bally Griffin Cottage, but I don't exactly know why he's been he's not been uh, declared. But I think it's interesting that Skelton's relying on uh, Gallia De Lito. If the, if the rain comes, because she loves it, testing. Uh, but I think if it's good to soft, uh, yeah, Fabulous would be the one. But if it does get testing, I'll probably have a little tickle on Gallia De Lito at double figure of it. Well, you usually spend 365 days where we are, Rob, but I can tell you, on your Boris bike right now, you would, would need an all-out Mac because it is absolutely pelting yeah. down the rain as arrived. And we're only 15 minutes from the studio to Kempton as the crow flies on. But there are soft ground horses that haven't been declared. So with the winter we've had so far, you have to assume it probably will be good to soft, won't it? Loads of Hendo runners out there as well on the card and all that sort of stuff. Uh, if I had to go for one, I, I think the bottom one is interesting, actually, for Skelton. He won this for Chamblou, of course, and... That is an interesting runner. I think if, if there was a value pick in there, it might be there. Whether I mean, Time Hill needs to jump an awful lot better. doesn't need to get anywhere near McFab. I can see McFab as winning this. I'm a bit surprised that they're running Gino Bello here as well. Maybe it's just too good an opportunity. But Brian, he sits on, and a lot of people were, would, will be fancying him over McFabless if they went to Cheltenham. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, you've got to run them somewhere, haven't you? So, um, yeah. But isn't it good that you know Paul Nichols and those types of trainers, they're, they're quite happy to run two in a race. Yeah, all right. Let's move away. Uh, from the Sunbury on Thames venue and go up to Weatherby where one of the races of the season is about to embark. It's, it's the Roland Merrick, which every Boxing Day is usually a Christmas cracker, but this, uh, okay, Ahoy Senor now diverts to the uh, King George, which is a great spectacle. Nine go there, of course, uh, but that means we've still got some classy runners here. When you see horses around the 160 mark yeah. running in this, there's got to be some value here. What are we looking at? Well, this is one of the best, strongest looking handicap chases you can get, really, it. isn't it? Yeah, and... Um, the market leader is Shan Blur of uh, the Skeletons, and you do look at Shan Blur, he'll always be remembered, not just because it was a Bet365 sponsored race, but he would have won the Charlie Hall chase by a million miles, wouldn't he? That, uh, that literally is burnt on your retinas, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> we go for lunch and he'll mention it. <laughs> um, and he would have won that day, and he was rated 148 that day, and he's still rated 148. Now, he has been beaten twice in between, but he did end the season with a particularly good runner-up um, to his name. And I spoke to Dan at Weatherby, uh, Charlie Hall Chase, say, when he, the stable really hit top form. And I asked him about Shamblin, and he said, oh, don't you forget about him. He, you know, he's, he's very, very, very well. Well, if you remember after that, 
Paul Keating and the likes here at the Racing Post wrote, there'll never be a better handicapped horse because we gave him a Racing Post rating in the high 160s for that, had he stood up, of course. Yeah. And he was running off this mark of 148. Now, they went a strange route with him. They went to Aintree with him, didn't we? And we'll get a word on what Rob thinks about this. Does he really stay this far? Well, I think he stays three miles well enough, but... Um, Does he? Because he was well beaten at Aintree, wasn't he? Well, I don't know, but it, you know, in terms of a handicap, Mark, he's still there. But that being said, you look at the the, the, the strength of opposition. Chantry House, some people thought he might be a gold cup winner. Keep going, keep going. Um, sounds Russian, progressive. Sporting John, who hasn't backed Sporting John once in their life? Kalashnikov, bit of a training feat for that, 648 days. But you've got horses like um, Lost in Translation, Windsor Avenue. We've all backed them at some stage. What's in the Walford horse that finished second to Long yeah, Press? Yeah, well, the one right at the bottom there is Inter Overdrive, who is a very progressive horse, second to Long Press. Um, he's gone up four pounds for that, but that might look red hot form uh, an hour or so later, mightn't it? So he's very much in the equation. Yeah. I just think if you're asking me to say who's the best handicapped horse in the race, very hard not to say Chandler. And it's first time out, Robbie, isn't it? So the question is, are you with him? Uh, does he stay? Yeah, I mean, you said about Aintree. I mean, he bumped into Sam Brown that day, who's proven to be absolutely chucked in off uh, 148. And he was 10 lengths kill the third. So I'm not too concerned about the trip. Uh, I mean, it's the fact that it's back at Weatherby and first time out, the exact conditions that he was running in when he was going to win that Charlie Hall by miles. So I think, yeah, he's, he's got to be the one. He's, he's clearly well handicapped off 148. I mean, but this is an outstanding field. I mean, it, it looks a more like a grade two than a handicap, to be honest. And I feel like if all of these run off level weights, I don't think Shan Blue would be like a humongous price anyway. So I think for that reason, he has to be the, the pick. I know he's favourite, but uh, yeah, I think he'll, he'll get the job done. Sounds Russian, of course, running that uh, that many clouds chase. And I, th I think this is slightly calmer waters for him. He'll like it if it gets a testing up there. But Happy Go Lucky hasn't been entered. Empire Steel, who's unlucky in the race, hasn't been entered. It, it, it's not quite as soft as we usually associate with Weatherby up there. This is a belter, isn't it? You think Shan Blue? I do, yes, I do. With Robbie. Um, and, and I think, it, that, you know, it was a good run at Aintree for me. And as I say, in terms of, he, he's one four eight, really? You know, it just sounds to me, if you said to me he's actually one five eight, I'd have gone, well, that sounds yeah. near enough. He's not for me. We've got the likes of I right in there, of course, everyone's favourite, and we, we must m mention him. I can see Chantry House bouncing back here, I think. And I, I think uh, he's the horse that you don't want to be with around the even money mark. But when he's a, a juicy price, and he has won at Weatherby, he, he was really impressive when he won at Weatherby. That was when it all started coming to fruition for him. But what uh, about his form figures? A bit, of, it's a bit of a postcode, isn't it? One P. It's a price thing with him. I, I just think this is a softer spot for him, and I right. think I think it, it, he can get into a rhythm going a slightly slower pace, hopefully. But uh, uh, again, listen, wealth warning uh, with Chantry House. But it, when these horses go off the radar. Yeah. It's when I start to jump on them, I think. And like I say, he does, he does like Weatherby. This, but that, that is an absolute cracker. Will we see the long press form get a boost prior to the King George with into overdrive as well? What do you reckon, guys? Right, back we go then to Kempton. Uh, it's Christmas hurdle time now, isn't it, Pat? It certainly is. It's the Constitution Hill show. And um, he's going to be, what, five to one on? He meets his, uh, his stablemate, Epitant. Then you've got So Royale, who... Alan King, in, in all fairness, was suggesting... Back for the trifecta. Yeah, if, I, if I could pick a finishing position, it would be third. And then uh, Highway 1-2 is a lovely horse. And Metier, who is also a lovely horse. Uh, but this is all about Constitution Hill. Five on. I just think enjoy him while you can. Well, we're lucky that he's running over the festive period, Robbie, aren't we? Because we do just get to sit back. Uh, it, is there a way to play the race? Yeah, I mean... When Constitution Hill runs, I'm always looking for like a without the favourite kind of bet, but I can't really find one. I think the market's got it spot on. I mean, Epiton is entitled to be second favourite. I mean, Kempton, two miles, is probably close to perfect for her. Uh, so Royal, I was, I was looking at him thinking maybe could he beat Epiton at a bigger price, but I'm not so sure. I mean, he's he's 10 now. Um, yeah, I just think the market's got it spot on, to be honest. So it's, it is one just to sit back and, and watch and enjoy Constitution Hill. What price is Constitution for the champion at the moment? Well, he's already big odds on. And Go on, what price is I he? I think he's about three on at the moment. I do think if he whizzes around this track like he did at Newcastle, to me, he could get to champion hurdle day. And I wouldn't be surprised if he was eight to one on. Quah! Blimey, I mean, he got honeysuckle lay right, Pat, but eight to one on it. When was that? Have we ever had one go off? I mean, probably back in the old days. We well, didn't. you're going back to our calls, aren't you? But she, he, he would, he's, he's on pace if things go well. 
and they don't go so well for honeysuckle. Yeah. It's a treat. I'll see what what Pat's saying there. I mean, there could only be five runners on the day. Like, horses are going to run scared of him, aren't they? Because it it, would almost be a waste of a target. Are you suggesting back him at threes on now, then? (laughs) Um, No, no, certainly not. But, I mean, he could could easily get injured, like, tomorrow. Like, we just don't know. But, uh, yeah, I'll see what Pat's saying. Um, I do worry he's going to scare everyone off, but he's going to win by miles again tomorrow. So, yeah, just just, a treat, uh, then. What a treat if you're heading to Kempton as well. And let's reference the last couple of years we've had. Even last year, we weren't sure if mm. there were going to be crowds. This is a traditional. People that aren't into racing go to Kempton on Boxing Day, don't they? It's a family thing to do. Yeah. And you've got potentially the best hurdler of all time running. What an absolute treat. I'll tell you what is going to be interesting. And thankfully, Highway 102 is in the race because he's a front runner. So it's going to be lickety split. I was assuming Epiton will be, a, what, even money at best in the without? Yeah, I would say so. Um, but. The one thing Alan, Alan King actually touched on with Constitution, he's so fast over his hurdles, maybe mm. there'll be a day when he just clicks the top of it. And well, Everton got beaten at sixes on in this race, they remember, by Silver did, yeah, Street. So. So. Well, I don't know, interesting. Interesting Metier there. I'll, I'll, I'll keep an eye on him with the future in mind. We must move on and across the Irish Sea go we, because at the 2.20, it's the Racing Post-sponsored Grade 1 two-mile novice chase. Uh, how many have turned up here? Uh, we've just got the Fab Five in this race, and we mm. do have an odds-on favourite. We were... Focusing on eight-year-olds going novice chasing, weren't we? We were looking at the Corto Star. Well, the odds-on favourite for this race is currently a four-year-old. Fidor. Fidor, who is probably best known for finishing second to Vorbon in the Triumph Hurdle. And so it's very interesting that they went chasing straight away with this one. And he was impressive, I thought, on his chasing debut. There was a lot to like about the performance. He won very well. He's a four-year-old, so he gets the six-pound allowance. Now, you could conceivably say... He should be giving these six pound rather than receiving six. He well, was Gordon so impressive. looks like he's got this by the short and curly, doesn't he? If you remember last year, yep. what was it? Is it Rivier a Detel he ran in the race? Yes, that's she right. was a four-year-old and a filly. Yeah. So we got all the announcers there, and she still got beaten by Blue Lord from memory. And that was a great race, wasn't it? This chap looks like he's got a great constitution about him. She's a bit buzzy, isn't she? And yep. Hard to catch right. Uh, Hollow Games is interesting. Yeah. Sanwa, oh, I'm not really sure what we do with him now. Yeah, Sanwa, is, is, he's been a notebook horse for a lot of his career, hasn't he? But um, he doesn't win that many times, does he, really? So well, since think, the county, it was uh, they stretched him out. He didn't win the Morgiana yeah. and it's gone down there. That's right. There, so, Hollow Games, yes, he's a rock-solid uh, benchmark, I suppose. But Fyodor, you just feel that they, they've had uh, drawn a ring round this race for a long time, the Gordon Elliott team. Four-year-old getting the six pound. I mean, that's gold dust, isn't it? Mm, listen, Rob, you're putting up a lot, a lot of shorties. It's against your usual uh, mo. <laughs> but are you feeling the door? Yeah, I am. Yeah, I mean, this race always sort of what tends to have a massive impact on the article market. You look back at the recent winners: Duvan, Min, Footpad, Larish Borg, Notebook, Fernie Hollow, all end up being close to favourite for uh, the article. I mean, I'm not saying he's going to challenge John Bond for favouritism, but. I do think Phil Dorr is potentially worth backing for the Arkle now at around 12 to 1. Um, yeah, really like what he did on his chasing debut uh, against Sam Wah. Um, I mean, it just suits him getting all this weight from these older horses. Uh, he jumped really well that day. I think he might be a bit better over further in time, but two mile one run left stand should be absolutely fine. Uh, I think Hollow Games probably a bit better over further. Uh, as I say, he's already beaten Sam Wah. The other two got too much to find. So in terms of odds on, Shots so sh- just around the even money chance is probably not a bad bet to be honest. So I'd, I'd probably rather back him for the arc call because I could see him certainly being about half the price after uh, after Boxing Day. Now that, that is a good preview, guys, for you out there. I think Robbie's absolutely nailed that. You're quite right. Hollow Games, I think, is sitting here because they've got Mighty Potter and they've got a two mile four and looks like three strike might go up in trip. So they, they, they've got to fit the jigsaw piece in. Different owners, of course. We wish you all luck out there where you're going. It's a great card at Leopardstown. I think Phil will probably just get over the line, though, there as well. Of course, a reminder, this is the Racing Post app, Grade 1 Novice Chase. And uh, no better time, if you've not got it, than to download our app because it just got better. Download the new app, then there you go. You can do that on the Google Play Store, the App Store itself. Exclusive content for the biggest names. Uh, there he is. He always comes up here, Keely, doesn't he? How long is he going to get away with that photo? Free <laughs> daily tips from all, all-star lineup. Stay ahead of the field this Christmas. You need to do it. And in 2023, as I keep saying, we are going to build on that bad boy. It's going to be the best around. Lots to come there. Lots to come at 2.30. This is still the race of the Christmas period, isn't it? 2.30, the King George, then nine runners. I'm delighted to say Venetia's curveballs have made it in. Pat Cooney, take it away. Yes, nine runners. And probably for the last three weeks or so, 
for when we've been trading this race, we've been saying, now look, be careful here because there might only be six or seven get to post on the day. We pretty much know Brave Man's game. We weren't sure Lon Press would come. Remember after he won, for uh, sure. was, he needs rain, he needs rain. So we were a little bit careful, with, certainly with the likes of Hitman when it came to anti-post, because Paul had always said that Hitman will go. Um, but that we were doing our sums, as I say, or maybe they're only being five, six, seven runners. Now we've nine. I think Hitman will probably drift on the day because he was a cautious trading stance we took with him. But you've got an Irish runner, Envoy Allen. I think he'll be relatively easy to back as well because we weren't sure would he be a three-miler. He, he won over three miles last time out, but he was always considered two and a half miler. So I think he'll be relatively easy to back. And I think the market is going to go whatever the state of the ground is. We're recording mm. this show on uh, Friday morning. So it's pretty hard to assess what it's going to be on a Monday afternoon. But it's torrential rain outside. And yeah. you'd rather have a horse with soft ground preferences than good ground preferences. And it's how you want to play it. Brave Man's is your good grounder. Long mm. Presse is your soft grounder. I was surprised Long Press is actually rated 170. Six pound higher than Brave Man's game. I think if they met in a handicap, I'd be over. I'd definitely be with Brave Man's getting six pound for him. So I don't know. It's a fascinating market. I say I'm a bit lukewarm envoy and Hitman, Brave Man's, and Long Press. However the ground goes, the softer it is, I'm more of a Long Press a fan. But I do think if it is soft ground, Royal Pagale is a very interesting runner in this race because um, he trotted up in a handicap at Haydock, didn't he? And he looked as though. If he ever ran in a race, in a group one, a grade one on soft ground, he'd be a player. And he's, he's won here, of course, hasn't he? Yeah. He's, on, this, on the 27th, he won that handicap. That's right. That's when he came into prominence. And, and I think horses like him, now there are nine. Granted, that it, it does say soft in the ground description. Yeah. I, I just see the, the punters at home thinking, there's some good horses at good prices here. You know, a hoist senior, 20 well, to 1. That's remarkable, he's 20s. Yeah. You go back to the Charlie Hall chase, a hoist senior was 5 to 4, Brave Man's game 2. Well, now one's two and one's 20. Yeah. You have to be lenient with a hoist in Well, you. we know what's happened since yeah. that market was So know, I, I do think I do think outsiders are going to be backed. And I think, as I say, if it's soft on the day, I might have a few quid each way on Royal Pagale and just honour Venetia deciding to run both. Yeah, of course, different owners, of course. Mm. But, Robbie, we were worried about the race cutting up. I guess that's why you were on the Hitman anti-post. Uh, with a hoist in you in the race, have you turned up the slip yet on Hitman? Yeah, no, I, love, I still like Hitman. Um, I could see him potentially getting slightly big on the day. I think it's a pretty hot race. Uh, totally agree with Pat on Long Press's rating. He's, a, he's rated 170 because he won that handicap of 164. But I feel like a lot of these could have potentially won that handicap of 164 if they ran in it. I don't know if it was that good a race at uh, Newcastle. Uh, I thought at the prices now, El Dorado Allen was kind of interesting. Um, I mean, you might be thinking I'm bonkers, but... He is still quite unexposed over three miles, and he's three pound better off with Brave Man's game for a three and a half length of feet at Weatherby in the Charlie Hall. Uh, I mean, that was still a pretty good run behind Protector out in the Betfair Chase. I think very few horses are kind of suited to soft ground uh, Haydock and a staying test, and Protector out is one of those uniquely suited to it. And he, he came out with a lot of credit that he beat Frode on that day quite comfortably. Uh, he's a bigger price than Frode in the market, he's a versatile regard on the ground. I think easy each way value at the moment, but my big fancy remains to be Hitman. I just don't think that... I think there are quite a few of these that could win this, essentially. I think it's it's, be, it's a better race than many might think. Blimey, you got the previous race right. You've got that totally wrong. Um, I, I mean, well, what, it, what happens then? What happens then, mate? Please, If El Dorado Allen wins this, right, I'll eat that Christmas tree. Right? There's, not, there's, not, there's not that... Well, I, well I'll, I'll record that on the phone. I could probably right? get it in. There's, there's not that much between the ratings... <laughs> In ratings between a lot of these and i feel like this horse gets underestimated quite a bit i think he's got a big one in him it might not be tomorrow but i do think at 25 to 1 he's worth considering each way oh look at robbie he's actually he's a, he's a professional there he's, it's it's like this clip's going out you know on christmas night he's saying it's tomorrow all of a sudden uh, and he's obviously wishing this guy i think hitman has to lead which i don't think he will do uh, I think Frodon will try and get the lead because he probably has to lead as well. I think Hoy Senor will want the lead mm -hmm. because this is what he did in the race last year. Brave Man's Game beat him. There's, uh, can we all agree there's not a better jumper in the race than Brave Man's Game? He was uh, yeah, he was lovely to watch at Weatherby, wasn't he? He was he was really Rolls Royce taste. Yeah, I, it's, I'm, I, you know we've been in the game a long time. Haven't we? I can't remember a novice last year jumping as well as he did when he came on the scene. Um, I'm sure there m might have been a couple. It's the ground that slightly worries me about him. I agree and. I mean, the fact the long press runs here, 
It's a long time since he's gone this way round. I know a lot of people were worrying about him when he ran at Ascot. We might be looking a bit too much into that. He's won at Exeter, of course, in Ascot, but he goes slightly out that way. I don't know if there's a chink in his arm whether that might be it. Mm, I, it's, he's thrown the curveball in. I would have been happy to have a go at Brave Man's game, I think, all being well, had he not been in here. Envoy Allen is the one... It got to have him in the top three, I think. Coming back, you know, on that down royal run. He, he, maybe he's just always been a King George or you know, this was this was the Messiah, wasn't he? Well, he was uh, the next Pegasus, wasn't he, when he first came into training, and then we all fell out of love with him. But he was it was good last time. Will he stay a eleven a, to two? Yeah, will he stay a really yeah, strong think, run racer? I could make a case for him being slightly shorter than eleven to two. Oh. I, I think Envoy Allen's being overrated on that down raw run myself. I think Ken Boy is past it. I think conflated, he drifted from like five to two to about seven to one. He's not beating those horses too far. Galvin's clearly not run his race. But I mean, I don't know. Good luck to you, Dave. But I don't really see it with Envoy myself. I'm not tipping him, but I think if there's one, if there's one for, uh, I think the market's got it right. I'm not sure it's quite right in the right order. It's a real puzzler. This. Yeah. I don't. I think someone. I, I think because Ahoy Senor is in the race, it will not be. That I think Team Ditchy would have gone. Like that because they were annoyed when he got taken on at Weatherby when when the money came for him yeah. even though they might yeah. have not thought it was Jerry Wright and again he tried to lead at Aintree I thought he did really well to stay in the argument for as long as he did because mm. he got taken on at Aintree yeah I think I think I think the best way to play this race is it's two thirty on Boxing Day leave it as long as you can because the ground could be anything by then it could be back to good it could be softish it could be very testing if Inter Overdrive wins. The role in America now beforehand. Can we all agree that Long Press will go our favourite? Uh, it would be a stronger line of form. It's certainty to go our favourite, isn't he? It's all about the ground. If it says good in it, I think Brave Man's game will be favourite. All right. So, all right. Weather watch then. Would you believe it for the King George? Uh, let's hope we've given you some pointers. I'm just going to stick Brave Man's game on top because. That, that Corto star last year, when he won, it was just like, look, 12 months later, this wins the King George, unless we got a real perler in there. And is there one? I'm not sure. Long press confuses the argument. Look, there are your previews. Uh, that was one of the most enjoyable we've done all year. It's a sizzler. OK, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. It's your Christmas naps here on What A Shower. And I have to say, they've been going really well in 2022, largely the man next to my left. And uh, it would be remiss of you not to go on a race that probably no one will watch. <laughs> Yeah, so I like doing the random things, but my, my, my food itinerary is all sorted out now for Christmas. I'm having turkey on Boxing Day, uh, on Christmas Day, and on Boxing Day, I'm having bangers and cash in the 250 at Market Raisin. Trained by Ben Pauling, friend of the show. Uh, very impressive when it won last time out. Won by 14 lengths, it went up nine. That's fair enough. I asked Ben Pauling about the horse last week. He said, yes, he's probably going for this race. Well, he's turning up. So, Turkey Christmas Day, bangers and cash boxing day. It's 250 the, the Lincolnshire raising. national for you. <laughs> Brilliant. And, of course, the highlight of the Lincolnshire track. There's so much racing going on. Where is Robbie Wilders honing in on? Yeah, it won't be turkey for me. It'll be some sort of nut roast. But uh, I'm feeling generous. I'm going to give two. Uh, let's start off with the next best first. Uh, we should mention the 240 at Limerick, the Fahin Novice Chase Grade 1. Uh, Jerry Colombi, Oz on favourite. Uh, I'm going to take him on with Kill Krut. Uh, I know Kill Krut, he probably hasn't quite delivered on his bumper days, but I think this horse needs a real, real test, like soft ground, heavy ground. I mean, you go back to his bumper form. The one time he encountered heavy ground, he produced the best bumper performance of the entire season at Leopardstown, one by 12 lengths. The RPI recorded that day was actually better than anything Fast Old Vegas ever done. And he's not encountered heavy since. Uh, this limit race has been heavy ground on nine of the last 10 years. Loads of rain forecast. I think he's going to absolutely love it. I think he's going to beat the odds on shot, Jerry Colombo, who's less experienced. And the nap is even stronger. Uh, I've been sweet on this horse for a few weeks for this. Uh, Miranda in the long walk hurdle, 12.45 at Kempton. Another grade one. Um, I mean, the fact that it's at Kempton is actually a bigger plus than if it was Ascot for her. I mean, she was brilliant over the course and distance last time. Beat Martello Sky and Molly All His Wishes absolutely easily thrashed them uh, on her first try at three miles. They're two of the best mares around in Britain. And I just don't think this stay and hurdle bunch are really up to loads in Britain. Uh, I feel like Champ and Paisley Park had a hard race in the long distance hurdle at Newbury. I think Champ's best fresh. I think 
Paisley Park's not really going to like this track. He's going to need he, he needs a kind of uh, a more of a stamina test. But I think everything's in place for Miranda to win that long walk hurdle, and she is the that. All right, let's just concentrate on that quickly because when the race was originally supposed to run at Ascot, she was the money horse, right? Yeah, Miranda was well back for the Ascot race, and then. Um... Maybe it sets up well for her, even better, being at Kempton. I think she's two from two at Kempton. Um, but you're on uh, more rain, the better for her, for absolutely. I agree with Robbie about Paisley Park. If you were designing a track for him to run at, it probably wouldn't be Kempton Park. So you've got Champ as, as a, as a, as a, a favourite by elimination, I would say. So, uh, yeah, I could see wisdom in Miranda. It's not there on official ratings, but... Uh, mm. Course form, yeah, definite plus. And Rob's right about Limerick. Limerick at Christmas makes Foslas look like it's basically Bath all year round. So it's uh, it's going to be heavy there, like the Somme, no doubt. And isn't that an interesting race? Absolutely. Cannot wait for that grade one time at Limerick getting a nod as well. Well, seeing as we're giving two, I think Iberico Law will win the first for Henderson. Team Hendo, that's a race that they farm, of course. LTO won in the lights. It was a fat finding mission at uh, Cheltenham last time out where he cruised in and then just blew up basically going there. Look out for him in the first. But the nap is going to be West Cork because the dust settles on the King George. They come out in the novice handicap over 2-4. It's fair to say he was something of an eye catcher or beaten out, out of sight by John Bond when he tried two miles again at Warwick. Go back to that two-mile fall form. This is the race for him. West Cork, Team Skelton. It's always the way, isn't it? Skelton's on TV. There are your naps. Well, very sadly, that's all we've got time for on this week's What A Shout. I was going to say, this year's What A Shout. We are back, of course, aren't we, on the 30th? You're going to be, you're going to be honing in from home then? Yes, I believe so, yeah. Um, yes, I think so. But uh, I thoroughly enjoy coming to the studio every week. Yeah, because you double up with the dogs, don't you, as well? You're going to Oxford tonight? Aren't you? Yeah, we've a big uh, competition at Oxford, the final of tonight. So I'm making my way down there. So I, lo I love a night at the Greyhounds and uh, lots to look forward to. Well, we're not going to sign off in 22 with you quite yet, Pat, but for, to all the Coonies, a loony Christmas to you all. I'm sure you'll have a blinder. Yes, looking forward to it all, and uh, Merry Christmas to everybody. And thank you for bothering to make the trip as we go to Maidstone. <laughs> yeah, it's trickier with the trains this time of year, isn't it, mate? But uh, come on, I'm, I'm, I'm the bloke that's in the office more than anyone else, so let's, let's, uh, let's lay off me for a bit, eh? We've actually sat the caretakers. There's no point in having them here. Rob literally lives in the office. <laughs> Rob, Rob, Merry Christmas to you all. It's been great. This is your sort of debut year, isn't it, on, on our AV side, audio-visual side. It's been good fun to have you on. I think you're onto something with your nap, man. Cheers, mate. Yeah, Merry Christmas to yourself. Uh, always have fun, don't we? I look forward to being in the studio with you again very soon. Merry Christmas. Absolutely. I would say feelings are mutual. But uh, anyway, for myself, Dave Alton, a very Merry Christmas to you all out there. Don't forget, keep liking, subscribe. That's what keeps the lights on here in the studio. Let us know you're out there. Get your Christmas naps in. What's the darkest horse running everywhere? Don't forget, guys, so much racing out there. Do gamble responsibly. That is our MO here at the Racing Post and Bet365 as well. Can't wait to see how you've got on. We'll be back on the 30th here on What A Shell. Great to have Alan King with us there. Unmissable stuff. From myself, Dave Orson, all the sport out there. Enjoy it.